Hey everybody, this is Rust from Metro Game Core. So I recently got this new PlayStation Vita here, and the first thing I like to do with a new Vita is to jailbreak it. Now this process is also known as modding or hacking a Vita, but it basically unlocks a lot of features for it. And I've already made a video about how to permanently mod a PS Vita, as well as a trick to unlock the ability to use SD cards for storage. And these guides work just fine, but there is another method that's even easier, and I wanted to try it out on this Vita here. And that method uses an app called Vita Deploy. Now on top of permanently jailbreaking your PS Vita, it'll also unlock the ability to use SD cards with it. And not only that, it actually has the ability to install a lot of the fundamental apps that you're going to need when you first jailbreak a PS Vita. So by far, I think this is the easiest way that you can jailbreak a PS Vita, and it's a relatively painless experience. On top of that, in this video, I'm going to show you how to unlock the PlayStation Store in case you get locked out when you first jailbreak your Vita. It's a very easy fix. So, without any further delay, let's get started. Okay, let's get started on tools first. If you're using a PS Vita 2000 or the slim model, you're going to want to have a micro USB cable, and that's it. Now, if you're using the fat PS Vita or the 1000 model, you're going to need the proprietary USB connector, as well as an official Sony memory card. And you only need this for the jailbreaking process itself, so it doesn't matter what size you get, I would just get whatever's cheapest. And then finally, you're going to want to have an SD to Vita micro SD card adapter. These are cheap, they're less than $10 on Amazon, I'll leave a link to them in the video description. And on top of that, you're going to want a micro SD card. I think 128 gigs is probably the bare minimum size you want. I found that 256 gigs is a sweet spot in terms of storage space and price. Additionally, on your PS Vita, make sure that you're signed into your local Wi-Fi, and that you signed into your PlayStation account at least once, and that you're running one of the software versions that you see above. If you're not running one of these, then just go ahead and do a system update to get up to 3.73. After that, you're ready to go. And one final note here, this only works on Windows PCs right now. So if you have a Mac, I would recommend that you use a friend's Windows machine or install a virtual machine. And I'll have instructions on how to do that in the written guide in the video description below. Now to give credit where credit is due, this is the guide that I used personally when I first set this up. And I'll leave a link to this in the video description too. And I would just think of this video as a companion to this guide right now. Now on top of that, on my website, I have a full PS Vita guide, which includes this Vita deploy hack, as well as all sorts of other installation tutorials for other things on the PS Vita. And I keep this up to date all the time. So if you ever run into an issue with the video here, make sure you check out that written guide in the video description. Okay, so first thing you want to do is make a folder on your computer. I'm just going to name this one peanut butter, and it's where I'm going to put all of my files. Next, I'm going to go back to my guide, and I'm going to download the two apps that it says to download, which is Final Age Encore, and then Vita Deploy itself. And they're both going to be zipped files. Now what you want to do here is you want to extract the final HE file, and you want to extract it into its own folder. So in WinRare you would select Extract Files, and then hit OK, and it's going to make its own folder with all the files inside of it. Now we can delete that zipped file, and then we just move over the Vita Deploy inside of the final HE folder. And that's it. Inside this folder, go ahead and open up the Final HE application. You're going to see this window pop up. Go ahead and select Trim H Encore to 7 megabytes, And there's a little arrow on the right, which will open up this side menu. And then select Vita Deploy. Now, back on your PS Vita, go ahead and plug it into your computer using the USB cable. Then start up the Content Manager app. And then select Copy Content. And then up top, you'll see something that says Connected Device and your desktop. On the Windows side, you'll get a notification that it's connected to your PS Vita. At that point, all you have to do is press the Let's Go button. It'll take a minute to download the package and install it onto your Vita, but after that, you're good to go. Back on your Vita, go ahead and select PC to PS Vita, then Applications, and then PS Vita again, and then select H Encore and Vita Deploy. Then select Copy. Hit the OK button to confirm, and then wait a minute and it'll copy these apps onto your device. At this point, you can exit out of the Content Manager app, and there you are, here are those two apps. Let's start with the H Encore one first. All you have to do is start up this app, go ahead and hit yes about this no trophies thing. And then when you get to this menu here, all you have to actually do is just exit out of H Encore. It'll take a minute to run through the process, but it's done. Next, go into your Vita settings app, and you should see a Henkaku settings option. Go in here and select Enable Unsafe Homebrew, and make sure these other two are checked as well. Okay, go ahead and exit out of the settings at this point. Now we can start up Vita Deploy. And believe it or not, we're very close to jailbreaking our device at this point. 
Now inside of Vita Deploy, just select install a different OS and then quick 3.65 install. It's going to run through a download function here. This is a great time to wipe off fingerprints from your Vita. And once it's done downloading the updater file, it's going to ask you, do you really want to downgrade to 3.65? You can read through everything. It's going to give you 20 seconds to do so. And it's going to ask you again, do you really want to do this? And you click, yeah, man, I want to do it. At that point, it'll run you through the official system update and downgrade it to 3.65. After that, the device is going to reboot. You can see here it actually keeps the original PS Vita boot logo, which is really cool to me. And just like that, you now have a permanently jailbroken PS Vita. Look at that, we knocked it out in about five and a half minutes. Now you can go into your settings, scroll all the way down to system, and then select system information and verify that we have the 3.65 modified version. Now let's set up the micro SD adapter. This is super easy too. Go ahead and put your SD card into the adapter and then put it into your PS Vita. Now go back into Vita Deploy, and within here go into the miscellaneous section, and then select Format as Storage Device, and then Format Target Storage. It'll take a minute to run through the process, and then it'll say Formatted. At that point you can back out to the main menu, and then select the Reboot button. After you've rebooted, go into your Vita Settings, and then select Devices, then Storage Devices, and then select Use YAMT. And that's all you need to do. You can close out of settings and reboot your device again. Okay, now that we've rebooted that second time, we're going to go back into Vita Deploy now. And then we're going to select File Manager. Now within here, we're going to move all of our files from the UXO partition to the UMAO partition. So go into the UXO partition and use the square button to select everything except for the Skello Trash option. Once you've selected all of them, hit the triangle button and then select Copy. Now go back to the UMAO section, hit the triangle button, and then select Paste. And that's it, you've now moved over everything from your internal storage over onto the SD card. This is going to give you a seamless transition when you move over to the SD card as your primary partition for storage. So now go back into the Settings app, then go into Devices, Storage Devices, and then change out your UXO and UMAO. For UXO, you want to set it to the SD to Vita, and the UMAO, you can set it to memory card. Then go ahead and close out of the app, and then reboot your device one final time. Okay, here we are rebooting back. Man, I really love that I can see the PS Vita logo on my hacked Vita like this. Now go back into your settings. We're going to go back into the system settings, and then system information, and then you can see down here on the bottom, the amount of free space shows that we have a 128 gigabyte card inside. So there we are, we're all set up. Well, now that I have you here and I've got about maybe six or seven minutes to kill, let me show you some other things you can do when you're first setting up your PS Vita. Let's go back into Vita to play. Now in here, we're gonna select the app downloader. Now just go through here and select as many apps as you want. I'm gonna do Vita Shell. I'm gonna do the Homebrew Browser, the ITLS Launcher, which allows you to get to the PS Store. We don't need the Enzo Installer or the YAMT Installer. And let's grab Adrenaline for PSP games and then the Package app. And let's grab the Save Manager as well as the Custom Themes Manager. There's a couple other you can choose as well. I'll show you one of those later. Once you've got them all selected, go back to the top and select Download the Selected Apps. From here, it's going to download each of those apps. It doesn't take that long because they're pretty small apps. And then you'll be greeted with the File Manager again. Now here, we're going to select all of them again using the Square button. And once we have them all selected, we're going to hit the triangle button. We're going to scroll down to the more section and then select install all. Now you're going to get a bunch of pop-ups asking you, do you want to install the package? Do you really want to? Blah, 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 blah. Just go ahead and hit yes for all of these. Also a good time to wipe off some fingerprints. Okay, once you're done, close out of the file manager. And there you are. Look at all those bouncing apps. So let me show you how some of these work. Probably one of the most important is the Adrenaline app. This is going to open up the PSP environment, and I have an entire video on this. More on that later. And the Package app is also a very important one. You're going to have to Google that one to see what it does. Vita Shell is a really powerful file manager. And a couple other of these are pretty good too, like the Homebrew browser. This one allows you to download freeware games, as well as ports and things like that. Now, if you look through this app, it's got some good selection, but it doesn't have everything. For example, one of my favorite apps is one called Auto Plugin 2, and that's not available on the Homebrew browser, but I have instructions on how to install it here on my written guide. So let's go ahead and go to that link, 
and then we're going to download this VPK here. And VPKs are basically the apps that are used within a PS Vita to run things. So once we've downloaded that onto our computer, let's go ahead and open up Vita Shell, which we can use to communicate with our computer. So let's go ahead and plug in our USB cable here. And then we'll navigate back to the main menu here in Vita Shell. What you want to do now is press the start button and then change the USB device to SD to Vita. And that's it. This just makes sure that when you do connect to your computer, it's going to connect to your micro SD card. Now press select to start up the USB connection. And there we are. Now we have access to our micro SD card. So let's move the auto plugin to VPK into the downloads folder. Now let's go into the UXO storage partition and into the downloads folder. And there you can see is the auto plugin too. So just select it and then it's going to ask you, do you really want to install it? And you say, yeah, man, I want to do it. It'll take a minute to install, but once it's done, you can go ahead and close out a Vita shell. Now there's auto plugin too. Now this is a really great tool because it allows you to install all sorts of little micro apps that'll make your Vita experience that much better. And I plan on making this app the subject of my next PS Vita video. So if you have any specific plugin requests, let me know in the comments below. Now another app you can install using the Vita Deploy app is the registry editor. And this is a really important one for PS Vita 2000 models. So let's go ahead and download this selected app and then install it as well. Same thing here, we're just gonna go to it and then select install. Okay, let's go into the registry editor and alter our screen to make it even better looking. We're gonna go into config, then display. And then for two of these options here, color space mode, as well as RGB range mode, we're gonna change them from zero to one. And what this does is it gives the PS Vita 2000 screen a more vibrant picture. And it makes it look a little bit more like the PS Vita 1000, which has an OLED display. Now it's a subtle difference, but I think this is something that's well worth your time. It takes two minutes to set up and everything is gonna look more vibrant. So once that's done, go ahead and restart your Vita. And here you are with more vibrant screen. Here's a comparison here between the before and after between the colors. The difference is subtle, but you can see that the colors, for example, the reds and the purples are much more vibrant on the bottom display than they are on the top. I think this is one of the easiest upgrades you can do to the PS Vita 2000. Okay, so now let's try out the PlayStation Store. And like I mentioned before, when you first do a jailbreak, it's probably not gonna have access to the PS Vita Store. And the reason why it doesn't work is because of security permissions. So what you wanna do is you wanna open up this ITLS Enzo app. And then once you have this open, go ahead and install the full ITLS package. It's gonna restart the system for you. And that's it, you're actually done. So now when you access the PlayStation Store, it's gonna boot right into it. And so for example here, you can browse and buy new games, or you can go into your downloads list and look at all the previous purchases you've made and download them from there. Okay, the last tool I wanna to show off is the Custom Themes Manager. Now this is gonna allow you to download and install new themes. And you can page through them in various ways. What I like to do is hit the select button and then sort it by a number of downloads. That way you see the most popular themes first. Now, after you get through all the pervy ones, you can find some pretty good ones like this PS4 one. It'll take a minute to download. Once it's done downloading, go ahead and press any key to exit and then go back into that first bubble on the top left and then you can change out your themes. I'm gonna change it over to the PlayStation 4 theme now. And that's it, you're actually done changing out your theme. So you can exit out of this app and now look, you have this wonderful PS4 style theme. So I definitely recommend playing around with the different themes that are available, but some of them are really nice. So what other things can you do with a jailbroken PS Vita? Well, I'm glad you asked. First thing I would do is check out my RetroArch guide, which will show you how to play classic games on your PS Vita. Then also check out my Nintendo 64 guide, which will show you how to play, well, Nintendo 64 games. And then finally, check out my Adrenaline guide, which will show you how to play PSP and PS1 games on the PS Vita. And these are some of my favorite to play on here because they look great. So really, that's it for this video. I wanted to show you how to permanently hack your PS Vita, as well as to set up the micro SD card option all in one step. So if you haven't bought a PS Vita yet, or if you have one that is unmodded, I hope this guide is really helpful for you. And of course, make sure you check out my written guide in the video description, which will show you all sorts of cool things you can unlock with your PS Vita. On top of that, I'll keep that guide up to date in case there happen to be any updates to this process at a later time. As always, thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. And we will see you next time. Happy gaming.